So a little time machine. That's what, you, what I, I'll say to people. It's like, you want to go back to 1933? You want to go back to, to you know, this, this period, this place, this time? You can do it with this. It's a long playing record. It's a 33 and a third RPM record, commonly called vinyl or vinyls today. But this is what most recorded sound I think what most people are most familiar with as records today, when you say records, are thinking of LPs. Uh, this one is a stereo as well. And in spite of the fact that it's nearly 50 years old, it sounds great. So you have to handle these with care, which I think is part of its charm. You have to give them some respect, and I think that's part of their appeal today. Long play. LP was introduced in this country in 1949, devised by uh, Columbia Records, and they felt it was a huge improvement on uh, the previous um, format, which was 78 RPM. It's called a 78 RPM because it travels at 78 RPM, revolutions per minute. The 78 also has the properties of a little more presence, it sounds a little more live because it tends to push the mid-range a little bit. This format generally called a 45 for its RPMs. The theory at the time was that the sound quality was much better if the grooves did not exceed half the diameter of the disc. In other words, it cut down the distortion. At 45 RPM, they felt that it had a, a better playback uh, resonance, but it would only hold about five minutes of music. The record is one long spiral. There's one groove on the side of the record. The, the deeper the tone, the wider the groove. The higher the pitch, the narrower the groove is. There's the groove and then the stuff that's up above the groove is called the land. So if you would magnify the surface of the record, it would it, it would be this big crevice that spirals around down into the center. So the irony to me is that a band today in, in, in 2012 will go into a studio, record their new album digitally, and then release it on LP in an analog form, so it's sort of backwards. Whatever the source material is, uh, however it's created, uh, is then stored. Now it's, it's, it's stored in some fashion. It's played onto a lathe, which actually physically cuts a record. There's a stylus that wiggles back and forth. Just It's going to, it's going to look like the record. That is called a mastering process. That uh, master is then uh, made into a mold, and that mold is then made into a stamper, and that is what the records are created from. In the acoustic era, which was before 1925, there was no tape, there was no storage mechanism uh, to create the record with, so it had to be done live. The band was in the room, there was a cutting lathe, the band played while the record was being cut. So the process really hasn't changed too much in a hundred years. I mean, it, essentially, you translate the analog signal into wiggles on vinyl. So the material is actually a type of vinyl, a little blob that goes into a press. Think of like a, a waffle iron. The label has to be applied, and then once it is created, it's popped out, put into paper, put into a, a sleeve, and then wrapped in plastic and put in a box and shipped to your nearest record store if you can find one. You're transported back to that time because they are a snapshot of the recording in that moment. And that's why you call them records. It's a record of that moment. Ever since I left you, Mama, I've been talking by myself. It seems like sweet Mama can't find me nobody else.